Greetings and welcome to day 211 of a screenwriter's journey. It's March 1st in the world of screenwriting and it's May 21st in the world of voiceover. So catching up a little but still well behind. Um, so I've sort of been in this thing for the last several days in this little bit of the script which I call sort of late second act early first act but when I'm writing it I don't think I realized how off I was in terms of what was going on compared to what should be going on at this part of the script again there's maybe 15 pages left and yet as I look at this now, I see there's way more story that needs to be told. And the problem is too much chitter chatter. Um, and it's just not quite working out. But sometimes when you're, I guess, you know, you can't see the forest for the trees. And I think that's the mode that I was in while writing this. Um, so they're having this big long conversation as they're walking through the woods toward the car or maybe they're in the car. Um, I think so. But it just there's just stuff spoken of here that doesn't need to be spoken. Maybe uh, as I think I've said before, I'm sure I have after 211 days. Just because you write something, um, sometimes you just have to get it out of your system. You have to make it known to yourself as the writer to kind of expand the universe of the story in your mind. And at the time, you may not realize that this is not going to be needed. But when it comes out, onto the paper, the cyber paper, if you will, it sort of becomes real. And even when you delete it, I guess theoretically, since you've already thought about it, it's sort of embedded, implanted in your mind. But at the same time, you can make the argument that if you completely change a character's arc or a character's point of view or something, all of that stuff you wrote of and thought of before just sort of it totally goes away so is it really um is it really worthwhile and i think it is to get rid of it i mean as they say fail fast in business and i <laughs> this may be a instance of failing slowly because it seems like it's taken a long time to get through this but um maybe that's not the case i don't know i just noticed i've only got 116 pages so I must have gotten rid of a whole bunch of just excess pages. Anyways, so uh, it stands on her own. Doesn't get a show of fingers. Not how very quiet. And yet, no, use the gun. So they're at the airport now. I guess I sort of lost track of where they were here. But it's just it's just too much talking, Jack. Yeah, they're at the airport. The plane is coming. Hmm. Oh, do you hear the thunder? We're having intermittent thunderstorms today, so maybe you will hear some thunder. I heard some this morning while sleeping. Well, I was obviously awake then. I was tempted to set up my auto recorder because you can never have too much rain and thunder. I uh, upload that on YouTube once in a while for people who like listening to it. Just a public service. Um, so now I'm to this spot where I just wrote all these notes out. No sign of nothing. So now we're back to the Jeep. I just... So they've gathered Abby, Luke, Hogan, and Holly. Well, and what did they do with Jake? Hmm. 
Yeah, I mean, some of this I literally, well, shouldn't say that. I was going to say I literally can't remember writing it, but I probably can. I just would like try to forget it. Ooh, I hear that runder, runder thumbling, thunder rumbling. 3,200 feet away. That's so stupid because that's the length of the runway, but they're not standing. I mean, why would they go to the far end of the runway? Some of this stuff, I just, just want to. <laughs> um, how is this helping you as a writer? Well, I think it's helping you see what happens when you just go bumbling, stumbling off, writing and writing and writing without a very clear picture yet of where this is going and what you want it to say when it gets there or by the time it's gotten there. I think that really is kind of where I am at this stage, both of the script and sort of this particular journey. I, f 